Hi everyone, I'm Alex Nottingham, founder of Alster Dental Academy, and we have Heather, our VP of training here with us. Hi Heather. Hello. Hello. Excellent. She's also our phone skills instructor. And we're going to be talking about decision making. So the big issue with decision making, and when I'm talking about decision making with dentists, I mean, we can talk about decision making as a whole. So definitely the broad realm of decision making. And also how, as a dentist, we decide what to purchase and how the soft stuff, such as learning or clinical CE or practice management CE versus the hard stuff, like more tools, because dentists love to buy tools. And so before I get into the criteria of making decisions, Heather, and, mm -hmm. and you know this, working in dental office, we both know this because my dad's a dentist, and so they're all built very similar. They love to buy things and they love to buy things that don't necessarily make them money. Right. And so we'll, well talk about those yeah. criteria. They think they make the money, but they, they think, don't. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it's kind of like this shiny object syndrome. We talk about the dentist get, I need the newest mm -hmm. camera. I need the newest intro. I need a milling machine. I need go on more, more, supplies the newest supplies mm -hmm. so it maybe it's this fear of missing out that's going into it mm -hmm. it's also kind of also a kid in a candy store having the newest technology and when you go to a trade show they're kind of hovering over those things so that is certainly something we want to keep in mind that as a dentist that's really the propensity is to be drawn to those things mm -hmm. and when we're talking about decision making we have to step back and think about what our objectives are. And very few dentists and very few people consider what we are, what we ultimately want. Mm -hmm. And I would think at the end of the day, when I talk to people, is we want to be happy, we want to have more free time, we want to enjoy what we do, we want to make a good living doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And certainly the toys are important. I'm not being a curmudgeon and saying you cannot have your toys and whether it's dental toys or cars or whatever, you can have all that stuff. But as business people, and that's really what I bring to the table is being better at business. I've devoted my career for those who have, have followed my story besides my JD and MBA, working with Tony Robbins and working with Fortune 500 people, my goal was to be a CEO of a major corporation. So instead, I'm bringing in those who follow my story again, helping my father with your help, Heather, transforming the business mm -hmm. and going that route because I have great compassion for dentists. And that's my passion is compassion and passion is to bring mm -hmm. these skills to them. You're bringing the verbiage for phone skills and talking to people and customer service. And I'm bringing the business mm -hmm. aspect. And right. We talked about this before when I developed the Alstertown MBA program, Heather, you encouraged me to develop a business and training program and leadership program for dentists. So that's just kind of a background of, of where I'm coming from and looking at it. I'm not looking at it. Certainly, I understand where you're coming from, dentists that are listening and team members that are supporting this version <laughs> and experience, but also coming from the business background and how to build a great business and, and great life. They're both very important. We want the business to serve one's life, not just you're working for your business. Because a lot mm -hmm. of dentists think they have a business. In reality, you have a job. You bought a job. So if those are our outcomes, okay, building a great life, having the freedom that we want, at the end of the day is having the freedom, then we want to look at what are the elements of great decision making. So there are three elements of great decision making, and this mm -hmm. can go for anything. And we will focus our attention a little bit on dental training. And I'm going to certainly make the argument that you want some sort of practice management training, phone skills, those type of things. Mm -hmm. And so we might narrow that because I'm going to put a link to the blog that talks about this. So the three things here in making great decisions. One. Will it make me money? Second, will it save me time? And third, will it reduce my stress? 
those are the three areas, in my opinion, you need to look at in making decisions. Now, also, will it make me happy, I think relates to part three, is will it reduce my stress? Reduces stress, happiness develops. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. So I want to talk to you about these things, Heather, because you see dentists, you talk to the dentists. I only get mm -hmm. to the dentist once they're on the program and talking to them. You're talking to those yeah. that are <laughs> in between making decisions and so on. And so I still want mm -hmm. to hear your opinion on these areas because look, this isn't about us saying, oh, you got to do our program per se, but I want to enlighten those that are listening that you want to make better decisions that will help you in the future. You want to be choosing things that are going to do those three things, make you money, save you time, reduce stress. So will it make money? When it comes to making money, there's a simple, what is it, acronym, ROI, return on investment. Will this make a return on my investment? That's what decision makers do, CEOs do. They make the decisions fairly quickly because they know what they need and then they change them slowly, which is a whole other area we can, we can uh, go to. So with ROI, it's very simple. If I invest in this, what's my potential of making money? And also, what am I losing mm -hmm. in, in money? Now, when you are investing in equipment, those are important. When you have open operatories, you have more potential to make money. But just because you built it, sorry, Kevin Costner. I think we have Kevin <laughs> Costner in that movie. They, <laughs> if you build it, they will come. Doesn't always work that way. You need the capacity right. of rooms and equipment to do that. But you have to have people that are coming into the chair. Does that make sense? Right. So when it comes to return on investment, we look at those areas. And typically, dentists will look at, I want more equipment. I want to build out my office. I want to spend the money on this, but will that generate the results? You have to first get people into the chair and have them, the phone has to ring, you have to convert those patients to appointments, build a great brand, and then you can have all the fun when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to a dentist recently and she ended up signing up for some coaching, very bright young woman. And she said, I'm spending a hundred grand on a build out. And and she even said to me, yeah, Alex, I know, I know that that's a lot of money and we should put some of that to all this money I'm losing in broken appointments and not converting phone calls and not converting case acceptance. That makes sense. And she was easy. I didn't have to convince her or anything. She says, yes, we have to put a portion of that into, into training, coaching. So we tend to spend so much on the equipment side and improving the, the, the build out and upgrading our office, that's all important. But you wanna make sure you have the patient influx to pay, because when you have mm -hmm. the patient influx, this goes over ROI, when you have the patient influx come in, then that generates money to invest in your office. Right. Now there are the cheapo dentists to say, let me, well, they could say to me, let me just train my, my team, make them amazing at converting patients and, and providing a great experience, but then you have an office that's falling apart, you can't have that either. Everything mm -hmm. has to match, but it's what came first, the chicken or the egg. And I'm saying it's the egg maybe, <laughs> or the chicken. There is something that's gonna come first. And that is you have to have patients calling your office and coming into your office. If you don't have that, you're not gonna be able to finance what happens. I like this self-funding approach where I invest in things that are gonna make me money, an annuity, a return on investment. And then I can then supply other things and I'm getting a return on asset, but I want to even get to that. Now we're getting to MBA level kind of <laughs> concepts here. So does that make sense? Yeah. So, and just to, to yeah, jump in, I mean, with your, your dad's practice, it was not a brand new practice. I mean, there was some renovation that was done. The, the um, consult rooms and the, the waiting room was a little bit upgraded, but there was some old stuff there from like the seventies. And patients weren't coming for that. They were coming from the experience that they got on the phone. They were coming from the dental quality. And so the only way to convey those things, even if you have the most beautiful office, if you have the best equipment, if you have you know, all these different techno technological things, 
patients aren't going to know about it if the team can't convey that properly on the phone. So that's the first thing. And then also sometimes they'll spend with marketing, which is great because it draws, you know, if it's, if it's a good quality marketing company, it's attracting patients to call the office. But again, ROI, if team members aren't converting those calls, then you're just, you're just essentially wasting money. So. Yes. Yes. Now, Heather, how as a dentist do you evaluate that when you're making a decision with your money? In your opinion, because you talked to a lot of dentists about this personally, mm -hmm. how as a dentist do I evaluate what I do next with as my money, far... What's, with my investment? Do I, I have the ability to train my team, mm -hmm. I have the ability to build out, I have the ability to get more equipment? How does this become more reality for me versus just right concept? Well, a lot of the biggest thing is to look at what are you currently doing, right? So are your con calls converting to appointments? And when I ask dentists that, you know, how many calls are you getting? How many leads are you getting every day? And how many of those are converting? What's your conversion percentage? They have no idea. So yeah. that's the first thing. And are you tracking those calls? Are you recording them to see how they're doing, what they're doing? No, we're not. A lot of them aren't. Uh, what is your case acceptance percentage? We have no idea. So those basic things, not knowing, you know, inspecting those, those systems, if you don't know that, then if you invest in marketing and things like that, how are you going to even know what value you're getting from it? So to me, it's like a lot of offices know at least cancellations and broken appointments they're for sure getting. So if you can look at that and see how right. much money is being lost just on that area, cancellations and broken appointments, no shows. And even if you're not getting a lot of people that are canceling at the last minute, how many are rescheduling, which is a time, you know, it's taking time from them having to move people and put people and fill in the holes. So all of those things just in itself are typically hundreds of thousands of dollars being lost. Yeah. And so it's, it's like, if you're not converting the calls, if you don't even know what you're converting from the calls, if you're not getting the, the people to show up for their appointments, then the emphasis needs to be placed on training first before you invest in equipment, before you invest in marketing, because anything that you invest in, you're not gonna get that ROI. So training is always the first best step. If I'm a business owner and I'm looking at it, it's like coming from a retail background, it's like, we're not doing inventory, we're not doing rearranging the store, we're not doing buying new items for the store until we're making our daily goals that's the bottom line that, that comes first sense. everything else gets put aside if we're not making our daily goals we don't have a business so so you have to monetize first clearly mm -hmm. what it's costing you mm -hmm. and then make a decision based on that and in your opinion it's going to be train your team first mm -hmm. yeah and and i also what comes to mind as well I, we get the excuse well i don't have the right team i will train someone else and we can go in the excuses we can do a whole discussion right. just on excuses that will be one of our blog posts what we'll do mm -hmm. but that doesn't make a lot of sense because it's the whole idea is whatever you're doing you want to get the most out of what you have so even mm -hmm. if you don't have the right team or you're not completely where you want to be at least you're getting a little more out of what you have and that right. then pays off it's always good to to it's like basically i'll put an example it's like putting your money in checking and getting zero percent in the bank or put it mm -hmm. in a money market and make something at least. Right. So, that, so we talk about the money issue. Can it save me money or make me money? The next issue is can it save me time? According to dental economics, dentists are producing $500 per hour and hygienists about $100 an hour. We then have to say we saw what it's costing in terms of not training. And then the dentist has to say, well, who's going to do the training? Am I going to use my time to do the training mm -hmm. with my team or coaching my team, or will I leverage other people to do it? Whether it's an online training, whether it's someone coming into your office or virtual coaching or a combination, what's the best use? And it's very simple. And, and it's not just with the online training, anything you do, dentist, if you're not making $500 an hour, step one, and you don't enjoy it, delegate it. 
especially if you're not making it, even if you do enjoy it, because you can be producing 500 or more an hour. And if you have other doctors in your practice or hygienists, every time you're not focusing on the business, that's losing hundreds of dollars, several hundreds of thousands of dollars an hour that's being missed out when it comes to that. The I put in here in terms of, and we talked about this a lot, just missing one phone that's not converted per month, one phone that could have been a potential new patient that we didn't get them to be able to make it in the schedule and became a patient, that ends up averaging, if we do one a day, to over $10,000 per month. Mm -hmm. So that also speaks to the, the financial incentive, money decision, and the incentive of where you put your time on it. And there's some other things I just put in this blog post just to kind of reach out as well is, is this worth your time, Dennis? Checking your emails all day long, you know, checking sports, what's going on there, putting out <laughs> fires at the office. And I don't mean literal fires, but fires or distractions that are going on. Often, if you have procedures and policies and training, you can reduce these fires, quote fires, doing administrative work. I know dentists that are doing their own payroll and coming in and bookkeeping. What, as I mentioned, watching the news, filing or dealing with insurance companies, ordering dental supplies. So you get the point here that we're being distracted mm -hmm. by things that are not worth our time. It's kind of like stepping over dollars to pick up pennies. Is my time worth it? Am I making the money necessary for these areas? You want to focus on high value activities and delegate the rest. But again, if I'm moving you, Dennis, into a CEO mindset, you're responsible for everything in the office. So even if you're not mm -hmm. even facilitating the the training, it needs to get done and you're responsible for it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we got to think about my father, for example, he'll start picking up boulders and cleaning the house or investment property. I'm like, why are you doing that? Is your time worth it? And if you hurt your hand, you can't work and make all that money. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. This is just human nature. We tend to sometimes when we're stressed, we get small. We focus on small things and we're missing out on huge potential in, in money, in time, and in reducing stress. And that kind of, do you have any other points on the time issue before I move into the next one, Heather? I don't think so. I, I mean, I think that one of the reasons that they might micromanage is maybe mm -hmm. They feel like they don't have the right team in place. I know that in your dad's practice, he would micromanage, not me, of course, but others because he felt like he couldn't trust that they were going to get things done. So, you know, if that's something that you need help with. We can certainly talk to you about that. Um, that was that was always an issue. And sometimes they think, like you said, if they don't micromanage and they take the opposite approach where they delegate it, there's no follow up on it. So delegation involves, you know, you, you give very specific directions, assignment, what you want, when it's due, and then you continue to oversee it until you know that it's being done the way you want. So then you can let the person handle it from there on out. I know with our team, there were certain things that I needed to have oversight on and make sure it was done the way I wanted, but it didn't mean I was doing it for them. I was overseeing it and then making sure that it got done. So I think that there's a middle ground with that, that doctors, you don't have to spend so much time doing things, but you also don't completely ignore it and let it go by the wayside and then say, I have no idea what's going on with this or that in the practice because I'm busy doing dentistry. You, you have to find a middle ground. Yes, you don't wanna be reactive where you're, you're not doing it or you're dealt, you know, just give it your micromanaging or you're just putting up with it and saying, just do it and, and not and throwing your hands up. Right. So as for the thirds, we talked about, about does, will it make me money? Will it save me time? And the last is, will it reduce my stress? According to the American Dental Association, staff-related issues are the number one stressor facing dental offices. So dentists are stressed out about, about the money, not having enough time, patients not showing up, payroll issues, competition, corporate dentistry, and having enough money for retirement. There's a lot of stressors going on. And so we have to see how can we reduce stress. And simply, you... You have to have the systems, in my opinion, in place, the people 
in place and the support in place. So there are multiple support mechanisms when it comes to practice management training. There's a the training itself and the team. There is also sometimes support with a coach that can help when it comes to the team, but also yourself, whether it's a coach, whether it's a friend, whether it's a mentor, whether it's a spiritual part, whatever it might be, we all need support systems, either we're paying for it or we're not, that are keeping us, our spirits high, keeping us focused, keeping us with our eye on the prize, which is to have that freedom and to have that enjoyment of life and to have a successful business. We should not settle for anything less, in my opinion. We should be able to have it all. Money, time, enjoyment, and all have it balanced because we end up sometimes becoming in fear mode and we can focus over focus on one or the other. But if you don't have your health, and we always told, told health as well, if you don't have your health, what do you mm -hmm. have? And dentists have a very high, we know about this, suicide rate, depression, anxiety, all these things that are coming in. There's a lot of stress, it's a hard job. And it's a hard job mm -hmm. when you add on the fact that you have to also run an office and, and be responsible for people. So do it right the first time. I love the quote by John Wooden, a famous basketball coach. He said, if you don't have the time to do it right, when will you have the time to do it over? So what we're giving you is we're giving you time and proven methods of thinking, of being successful from hundreds to thousands of practices that we have worked with or have influenced. And not just that, but also what I'm teaching you is not just for me. This is based on the research and all the best leaders in the marketplace of what's being done. ROI, time management, and reducing stress. If you can get those in balance and in control the best you can, then you will have a really good benefit. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we want to keep our eyes on the prize here and and not deviate. And, and the last thing, so two last points. We want to be mindful of distractions. And Heather, you're probably nodding your head. Dennis, we Dennis get very distracted. It's like mm -hmm. a tortoise in the hair. The, the hair that <laughs> is always onto something Hopping else. All around. Mm -hmm. And and we're just commenting. I mean, it's it's the nature of of the business, nature of life. We're working on patients and getting and getting on to a whole bunch of things that are pulling pulling you. So keep your eye on the outcome is number one, and stick with it. Little by little, whatever you're doing when it comes to training and your decision making, Napoleon Hill, they can grow rich. Make decisions quickly, change them slowly, see them through. We tend to get knee jerk reaction and change very quickly. See it through. It will change. It always does. And I really will implore you check out for those who haven't, check out the Dental Practice Excellence webinar. And we just made an update to it. It's a great webinar. And I'll put a link for allstardentalpractice.com, great webinar, and we're talking about the skill sets that are needed for training, some of the excuses you wanna overcome, some verbiage, things like that. So that's something definitely you want to check out. So I'll end here, and until next time, go out there. Go out there and be an, an all-star. All <laughs> okay.